heart of a woman. Hi guys, we're back and we're on set with the beautiful Nicole e. James. I got the you got name it right. right. <laughs> you need to shake my High hand five. for that. <laughs> Nicole e. James. And um, Nicole e. is a survivor of mm -hmm. cancer. And Nicole, e., when we met, you know, you were talking about how um, people that are survivors, they're actually ashamed to say that they are. Sometimes you, you feel like they're ashamed, mm -hmm. you know, because it's almost like a secret society. People don't say. You have to know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody, mm -hmm. you know, to get in. You know, I, I don't come across very many survivors, and I think it, it's scary because people need to know that even though you hear cancer, you do hear survivors because yes, there's a lot of survivors of amongst course. us. And I think that gives people hope as well mm -hmm. when people know that there are survivors that are walking. So I am proud to say I'm a survivor. Yes, yeah. You know, however, I had to go through all that I went through to be at this place of peace, mm -hmm. to be mm -hmm. able to say I am a survivor. And that was truly a journey. It, that, it, yeah, is. it and is. And you know it what? Continues. It still continues. It's, it continues, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. So we were, before we went to break, you know, you were talking about your five surgeries mm -hmm. that you had, the chemo, 12 and, and 12 <laughs> rounds of chemo, and you are here. Yes. And I think that, wow, I'm, I'm, I, I have, I'm lost for words. <laughs> I, I can't even begin to imagine what your life was like. Mm. The surgeries, the chemo, the distress, the depression. But you know what I glory in? That you're here. Yes, I am. You're here, and you, you're the voice. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that the things that we go through in life, and God said that you are supposed to be alive, it mm -hmm. is for a purpose. Mm -hmm. Destiny calling. I call. believe that, yes. Destiny is calling, mm -hmm. and you are answering that call. I try to be obedient. So what is your life like now? Oh, my life is exciting. Mm -hmm. My life, my life is, it's like I said, I'm still on that journey, mm -hmm. you know, because every day I try to live in that day, not worry about yesterday because that's already gone. Yes. Don't stress about tomorrow because it hasn't come yet, mm -hmm. but really try to live in today. I've been trying to be obedient. You know, I remember telling my mom, I said last year was one of the toughest years of my life. Yes. And I remember I would even ask God, is this the life you saved me for? This is what you saved me for? Mm -hmm. After I would have gone through all that I've gone through, you're putting me through hell on earth. Yes. Like, And when I thought it couldn't get any worse, he kept showing me it could get worse. <laughs> and I was like, are you challenging me? Mm -hmm. You know, why are you putting me through this? And I remember I even asked my mom, I said, how would you feel if I woke up and you know, I wasn't here anymore. And she cried. And because she didn't understand what was going on, neither did I, mm -hmm. you know, but I had a checkup with my doctor and I recognized that I was suffering from PTSD. Okay. And that's post-traumatic right. stress mm -hmm. disorder. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, you know, as they describe it, you know, the veteran, the war, people yes. that go out, yes. soldiers yeah. that go out and fight war, they're yeah. so traumatic, mm -hmm. you know, because the reality of what they've been through is now hitting them. And yes. that is what happened to me. I would and get that's amazing though, Nick, because you know, people would never think of that mm -hmm. with cancer. Yeah. And I'm sure with any any disease Anything. that could take your it's life. Traumatic. It's traumatic. It's it, yeah. traumatic. I mean, something else that may traumatize you mm -hmm. may not have that effect on mm -hmm. me. But cancer traumatized me to the point where it has definitely altered my entire life. Yeah. You know, even my children's life, you mm -hmm. know, if they see me and they, you know, I tell them, look, mommy isn't feeling well. Mommy needs to lay down. They go into panic mode. Mommy, yeah. are you okay? Mommy, something hurting? My daughter is always laying hands to pray because she's right. like, you know, so it definitely has traumatized them as well. But we have also a lot of positives. Yes, we do have yeah. a lot of positives. Mm -hmm. You know, like I tell people, cancer saved me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was talking to a friend and she said, Nick, how you could say that after what you've been through? I said, because without cancer, I would not have been... The person that you see now yes. I wouldn't be at peace I wouldn't yes. be 
I think you know now it's it, it, you know I feel so excited because it's like I finally get to live understanding my purpose mm -hmm. and that's such a huge thing because yes. you recognize so all those years what was I doing <laughs> just living just existing yeah you know because now I get up and I know a hey, Mm -hmm. I have work to do, to do and yes. it's not for my glory you know like I tell people I don't want people to look at me and see yes you see a survivor mm -hmm. but I want you to look at me and see what God can do and continue and continues to do, to do, to do because yeah. I remember the doctor told me he said Nickley what you are trying to do he, he you know he's like Nickley I know how you feel about your God and that, that. but what you are trying to do is one of the hardest things mm -hmm. you cannot manage PTSD mm -hmm. without pills and I said listen to me I am not taking any more pills yes I said I am not going to let this consume me mm -hmm. I said I believe that if I had if I had gone through five surgeries 12 rounds of chemo that this is not going to take my life exactly. I said, you know the yes. lord definitely have something planned for me mm -hmm. i said what doesn't break me will definitely make me the person he needs me to be yeah you know however strong but you know everyone sees me and they're like you went through cancer you went and i tell them yeah i did cancer took down to my dreams wow you know you know as a child a person you grow and you you know you have your plans I, you know i want to have my own home when i'm mm -hmm. this age i want to retire i want to do this and cancer took everything from me mm -hmm. you know i remember before i was even diagnosed i was talking to my loans officer about looking we were looking for a house yeah you know that's where i was i yeah. was at that place in my life very comfortable financially you know, they didn't have to worry about nothing. And, you know, cancer took everything to the point where I had to worry about feeding myself. Yes. You yeah. know, and having to start over. And I'm asking God, how am I going to do this with two children? Mm -hmm. I remember one day, you know, I started, I said, you know what? I said, Father God, this is, this is yours. My life is not mine yes. to do what I want to. I am your servant mm -hmm. because I believe that things happen in our lives where you know he tries to get our attention oh yeah but I was guilty of you know father God if you pull me through this I will do, I this. Will do this you know bargain, uh, you bargain. Know, we, yeah we father God if you pull me through mm -hmm. and he did, I did that so many times you know my children you know their lives are testimony and up to this morning my you know we were having that conversation you know, my son almost died when he was a baby because wow. he ended up with pneumonia and, you know, he couldn't breathe and it was a mess. You know, my daughter broke her, her leg, you mm -hmm. know, so bad that the doctor said, no, this isn't good. And when you see my daughter, she runs, she jumps. Nobody yes. would believe that she broke her, her bone that bad. She mm -hmm. broke off the femur bone completely. Wow. You know, and I tell them, I said, you know, you guys have a plan. God have a plan, plan for, for your, your life. Yes. I said, and you have to walk in confidence to know that he's going to use you. Mm -hmm. Don't ask him when, mm -hmm. just be prepared, mm -hmm. you know. And I remember um, I was talking to a friend and she said, Nick, you know, I don't know how you can be so strong after what you've been through. Why are you telling everybody your business? And I said, wow. I said, listen to me. I said, knowing because she knows me, mm -hmm. and I am usually a very introverted person when it comes to my business. I don't want nobody in my business. I feel I could do everything on my own. But I had to go through cancer yes. to understand that you need people. I had to go through cancer and lose everything to learn humility. Yes. I had to, you know, so I had the different lessons that I had to learn. Mm -hmm. And then I understood that this is not my life. You know, I remember I went to my pastor one day and I wasn't working. And, you know, I said, you know, the Lord told me to do something, but I don't know how I'm going to do it. And she said, what is it? I said, he told me there was this guy, homeless guy on the street. Mm -hmm. I don't know him. But every time he's speaking to me and he's telling me, you need to feed him. Get to know him. Mm -hmm. And I remember I said, I don't know how I'm going to do that because I'm not working. I don't have an income coming in. How am I going to do this? And strangely, every single day, I was taking three square meals to this guy. Right. When I don't see him on the street, I would leave it at Subway. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Father God, I don't know how you're doing it, but you're doing it. Yes. You know, and till obedience, the guy. Obedience, that's all God wants. He wants till us to be obedient. Yes, exactly. Till mm -hmm. the guy told me, he said, you know, I want to get off the street. Wow. 
and it brought me to tears because I would stand, my children, we would stand one day, my daughter said, you know, can we pray for you? Hmm. You know, and he said, he looked and he said, oh, she said, I already prayed already. She said, but you can't have too many prayers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he stood there and she prayed, yes. you know, and you know, that came, that season came and he's doing pretty good, you Great. know, he's kind of settling, you know, we still go visit him and make sure he's okay, you know, he's, he comes on the street, but he has somewhere to call home, yes. you yeah. know, and you know, the father, the Lord told me, okay, you need to do something else. I need you to do something else. And I had no clue what it was. Mm -hmm. And I remember talking to some sisters in church and I said, you know, the Lord is telling me, I need to do something. I need to do something. I don't know what it is. And then, you know, he spoke this 5K that I hosted last week. Yes. And, you know, when I listened to people's stories about, you know, their journey, their battles, mm -hmm. it definitely inspired me. You know, I... My um, pastor as well, my ex, well, he passed, Pastor yes, Brenner's Brenner, wife. Yeah. She was the last person to cross the finish line. Yes. And I presented her with, uh, you know, something at church yesterday. And I told her, I said, we're not celebrating that you were the last person. You finished. We're eh? celebrating that you finished. Yes. Because I probably, and people who would have gone through what I've gone through, understand how hard it is to stay motivated, you know, especially when you are alone yes and that's that's it i mean she finished and girl i wish we had more time <laughs> you have to come back and on Anytime. you know on that note she finished and yes. that is what i think we can end this program by saying that you in a race you need to finish yes. and finish strong strong yes finish strong my sister your end is not <laughs> here there's so much more to you you know, and I just want to tell you, God bless you. Thank you. You know, God continue to strengthen you and just be obedient. Mm. He saved you for a, a purpose. purpose. Yes, he did. He saved you for a purpose. And I continue, I will continue to pray for you. I'm so thankful oh. to God that I met you. And you know, I wasn't it, coming to I that know, event, I know, right? I know, but so, I believe, yes, as I connection. said, people meet, they connect spiritually yes, before, before they meet physically. Yes. So you... Even though you weren't coming, you had to come. I had to come. Yeah. You, know? you know, so my girl, God bless you so much. God bless your children. Thank you. Mighty man and woman of Thank God. You. And you know, we, we um, Sean, this is what you're doing too, giving women, you know, people an opportunity to share their testimonies, whether it be from a business. So we have to pray for you too. So Thank I'll definitely you. be praying for you. Thank you, I need it. I definitely <laughs> will be praying you. for you because you know you're called to do what you're doing amen. and you amen. know there are going to be obstacles but we're going to pray amen. we're going to pray Together. for you as well so god bless you yes. so you. guys you know it's always great to be here god bless you take care of yourself take care of each other from my heart to yours bye Clothing and accessories provided by Afro Gypsy Nook, located at 28th North Oldfields, Lowlands, Tobago.